So I just picked up a new pinball machine that I'm all excited about. It's called High Speed. It was the prequel to the Getaway, which is the machine we're using in the Inner Sill Pinball Project, which makes it very relevant for this video. And ironically, and unfortunately, it's been damaged by someone trying to repair the main board. Not me. And someone blew out the HC55564 Continuously Variable Slope Delta Modulation IC. Now that part was made by Intersil, but it's been obsoleted for a decade or two, and uh, they're kind of hard to find. So I decided to reverse engineer it and put it into an FPGA. Luckily there's a lot of data sheets out there that explain how they work, and this is how um, basically it works. Is there's a, a data stream coming from somewhere, For the, in the case of the pinball machine, it's coming from the processor and then a clock that synchronizes everything at the sample rate. When a 1 is present at the data input, a slope begins to rise upwards. When a 0 is present, the slope starts heading downwards. If you get 3 in a row of 1s or zeros, the slope becomes steeper and rises faster. If you have alternating 1s and zeros, the slope goes up and down but stays continuous. This is a simplified block diagram of the HC55564. I've removed all the encoding blocks so we can just concentrate on decoding. But I will go back to encoding at the end of the video because that's pretty fascinating too. So every clock, data is sampled into a shift register. The data also controls a switch which is removing or adding charge to an external capacitor that generates our analog output. If we receive three zeros in a row, or three ones in a row, a thing they call the syllabic filter changes the rate the charge is added or removed from this capacitor, increasing the slope angle. And that's it. There's not much to it. Okay, to put it into an FPGA, I used a little dev board called Papilio 1, which has a Xilinx FPGA on it. It also has a 32 megahertz clock, which was convenient for oversampling the data clock. I ran it into a shift register, which was three deep, and I detected falling edges with an edge detector, which I synchronized everything to the sample rate. Data was sampled once every falling edge and put into a shift register, very much like the other slides. If we had three zeros or three ones in a row, it would change this MUX, which had constants attached to it, which would load a terminal counter. The terminal counter would get loaded once every falling edge and would start counting down to zero and then stop. And if the slope was more, the value in here would be more. If it was less, this value would be loaded with a smaller value. When the counter is not at zero, the data is fed through a tri-state buffer out to a capacitor, either adding or removing charge. Once it reaches zero, then the tri-state buffer is opened up and the drivers are no longer adding or removing charge. And that was pretty much it. It was pretty simple to put together and worked pretty quickly. Just a little bit of fudging with these constants over here to make it sound the best. To make an encoder from the decoder, we just need to add an analog comparator that compares the analog output from the decoder to our analog reference. The output of the comparator will be a digital signal that will feed back into the decoder, which will try to track the analog input. And then all we do is we transmit the data at this node along with the clock. And it's as simple as that to make the encoder side of this. This is what the pinball machine sounded like when I picked it up. And this is what it sounds like after I've added my FPGA board to emulate the HC55564.